Hi everyone and welcome back. Again, my name is Robert Yang and today I will be going over the medication called Plerinone. The brand name is called Inspira. So the first part, I will be going over the patient education. So before going over the medication, let's look at what it treats first. So what is heart failure? Sometimes it is known as congestive heart failure. It occurs when the heart muscle doesn't pump blood as well as, as it should. Blood can often be back up and fluid can build up in the lungs and this can cause shortness of breath. So symptoms include shortness of breath, fatigue and weakness, swelling in the legs, and even chest pain. So what are the causes, risk factors, and preventions? So for the causes, it develops after other conditions have damaged or weakened the heart. The pumping chambers of the heart, these are called the ventricles. It can become very stiff and not fill properly. And then eventually over time, the heart cannot keep up with the blood pressure demand. For the risk factor, this include coronary artery disease, diabetes, and obesity. And then for the preventions, this include smoking cessation, maintaining a healthy weight, and reducing and managing stress. So these are just only a few of them, but there are actually a lot more that I didn't mention. So now that we understand what the medication treats, what is this medication? So this is a medication used to treat heart failure. It can also be used to treat high blood pressure and it is available as a tablet. What are some important safety issues before taking this medication? Do not take it if you are allergic to this medication or any part of it. Tell a doctor if you have health problems such as high blood sugar, high potassium level, or kidney disease. Tell a doctor if you are taking any of these medications, which include potassium, spironolactone, or amylaride. And tell a doctor if you are pregnant. You must check with your doctor and tell him or her all the medications you are currently taking, which include over-the-counter, natural products, and vitamins. How do you take this medication? Take the medication as directed by your doctor. You can take it with or without food. If it upsets your stomach, take it with food. Swallow the tablet whole with a full glass of water and keep taking this medication and do not stop or change the dose unless told to do so by your doctor. What are some important safety issues while taking this medication? Tell all your healthcare providers you are taking this medication. Check and monitor your blood pressure. Talk with your doctor before using any salt substitute. This medication may affect being able to father a child. If you are 65 years or older, use this medication with care. And if you have high blood pressure and plan to use over-the-counter products that may raise your blood pressure, speak with your doctor first. What can you expect from taking this medication? So some common side effects include feeling dizzy or lightheadedness, headache, and even cough. Other adverse side effects include chest pain, diarrhea, swelling the arms or legs, and not able to pass urine. With these adverse side effects, I recommend seeking medical attention as soon as possible. What happens if you miss a dose? Take the missed dose as soon as you can remember it, and if it is close to the time for your next dose, then skip the missed dose and go back to your normal time. Do not take two doses at the same time or extra doses. How do you store this medication? Store it at room temperature in a dry and cool place. Do not store it in the bathroom. Keep this medication in a safe place away from children and throw away any unused or expired medication. Now move it on to the prescriber information. For the pharmacologic category and pricing, so this is an antihypertensive, diuretic, potassium sparing, and mineral corticoid receptor antagonist. So for the pricing, it depends if it's a brand or the generic. For the generic, it is 25 milligram per each. This is going to cost $4.17 to $4.34. And then for the 50 milligram, it is the same price. For the brand one, meaning the Enspera tablet, this is the 25 milligram per each is $15.79. And then for the 50 milligram, this is going to cost the same. Now let's look at the recommended dosing adults. So for heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, the initial is 25 milligram once daily. This dose can be double after four weeks if the serum potassium or renal function are stable to a maximum target dose of 50 milligram once daily. Note that this is only for use in patients with symptomatic heart failure with preserved ejection fraction of greater than or equal to 45% who have an elevated serum natural uretic peptide level or have been hospitalized for a heart failure in the last 12 months. For heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, the initial is 25 mg once daily. 
This can also be double after four weeks if the serum potassium remains less than 5 mg equivalent per liter and if the renal function is stable to a maximum dose of 50 mg once daily. Note that this should be considered for use in patients with symptomatic, meaning New York Heart Association Class 2 to 4 heart failure with reduced ejection fraction of less than or equal to 35%. For the post myocardial infarction complicated by reduced injection fraction, the initial is 25 mg once daily, may double the dose after 4 weeks if the serum potassium remains less than 5 mg equivalent per liter and if the renal function is stable up to a maximum target dose of 50 mg once daily. Note that this should be considered for use following acute myocardial infarction in patients with left ventricular ejection fraction less than or equal to 40% plus symptoms of heart failure or diabetes. The recommended dosing in hypertension. The initial is 50 mg once daily. The response must be evaluated after 2 to 4 weeks, and the dose may be titrated as needed to a maximum of 50 mg twice daily. Note that this is not recommended for initial management, but may be considered as additional therapy for resistant hypertension, especially in patients who do not respond adequately to combination therapy with preferred agents. Now let's look at the recommended dosing in the outer kidney function. For heart failure, if the cranial clearance is greater than or equal to 50, then no initial dose adjustment is necessary. If the cranial clearance is between 31 to 49, then it is 25 mg every other day, may double the dose after 4 weeks if the serum potassium remains less than 5 mg equivalent per liter, if renal function if stable up to a maximum dose of 25 mg once daily. If the cranial clearance is less than or equal to 30, then use is not recommended. For hypertension, if the cranial clearance is greater than or equal to 50, there are no dosage adjustments. However, if the cranial clearance is less than 50, or the serum cranial is greater than 2 mg per deciliter in males, or if it is greater than 1.8 mg per deciliter in females, then the use is contraindicated. There is actually a risk of hyperkalemia, which increases with declining renal function. Mechanism action. So aldosterone synthesis, which occurs primarily in the adrenal glands, this is modulated by multiple factors, which include angiotensin II, adrenocorticotropic hormone, and even potassium. Aldosterone binds to the medical corticoid receptor in both the epithelial and non-epithelial tissue, and this increases blood pressure through the induction of sodium reabsorption. So at plurinone, this actually binds to the mineral corticoid receptor and blocks the binding of aldosterone. Pharmacokinetics. The volume distribution is 42 to 90 liters. Protein binding, this is 50%, primarily to the alpha acid glycoproteins. It is metabolized primarily hepatically via the CYP3A4. The bioavailability is 69%. The half life elimination is 3 to 6 hours. And in the time to peak, it is 1.5 to 2 hours. It can actually take up to 4 weeks for full antihypertensive effect. The excretion, it is 67% in urine, 32% in feces, and then less than 5% as unchanged drug in urine and feces. Medication safety issues. Sanolite lookalike issues. Inspira may be confused with Spiriva, and then in older adults, this is a high-risk medication. For the various criteria, diuretics are identified as potentially inappropriate medications to be used with caution in patients greater than or equal to 65 years due to the potential to cause or exacerbate syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone secretion or hyponatremia. So you want to monitor the sodium concentration closely when initiating or adjusting the dose in older adults. The followings are contraindicated. Serum potassium greater than 5.5 mL equivalent per liter at initiation, cranial clearance of less than or equal 30 mL per minute, or concomitant use of strong CYP3A4 inhibitors such as ketoconazole, itraconazole, clarithromycin, or ritonavir. And then in hypertension, the followings are contraindicated. Type 2 diabetes with microalbuminuria, serum cranial of greater than 2 in males or greater than 1.8 in females, cranial clearance of less than 50 mL per minute, or concomitant use of, with potassium supplements or potassium sparing diuretics such as amylaride, spironolactone, or tramterine. For the drug interactions, it is metabolized primarily by CYP3A4. Inhibitors of CYP3A4 can cause increased exposure. You want to reduce the starting dose when used with moderate CYP3A4 inhibitors, which include verapamil, 
erythromycin, and fluconazole. And here are my references. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I had making it. Thank you again for joining me today. If you can do me one last thing is to like, share, and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you and take care.